you know, I think one of the things that we've we've heard a lot of people say, you know, a that building overlays creates challenges for visibility, and and b that you know we haven't figured out how to operate how to operationalize NSX, and we kind of took that criticism pretty seriously, and we did a lot of work on it last year in particular, both by um, developing these operational best practices and also by putting capabilities into our platform and by working with third parties. So I'll cover all of those pretty briefly. Um, this is one slide from a much longer presentation that covers what we learned when we went and surveyed about a dozen of our top deployed customers to try to figure out what they were doing to make NSX operations a reality. And this, I, I alluded to this earlier, this is kind of the maturity model where at the bottom you have the kind of the least <coughs> mature and the top the most mature. And so if you look at something like the, the team structure that we were just discussing, you know, so the total siloed approach is at the bottom, the completely blended approach is at the top. So what we find is that, you know, not everybody is at the top all the way across. And you know, probably almost nobody's at the top all the way across, but in general, people are moving up across all of these axes. So, you know, for example, you know, people are moving from traditional three-tier networks to these fine networks. You know, doing that gives you some operational advantages, obviously. Um, you know, uh, you know, certainly for most of our customers, they're pretty far up the virtual to physical, but by no means 100%. You know, a lot of our customers are 50% virtualized, um, and and it's you know all the way across there. And and the other thing, you know, again, there's a long presentation that this is kind of drawn from that you can you know follow it in your in your spare time. But the the main thing here was that there's a lot more to this than just sort of tooling or um, you know product capabilities. And there's this you know, thing that you have to focus on the people and processes as well as sort of the more, you know, the things that maybe to us are more fun to think about, which is like tools and architecture. Um, you still need to worry about the people and process. And so that's kind of the, 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 maybe the non-sexy side of it, but it is something that increasingly we're, we're focused on. And you know, I think it's really interesting that last quarter, we added 90 production customers to the 250 we had at the end of the year. So we're actually seeing like an uptick in the rate at which we're getting new customers into production. And I like to think that's because we're sort of now being able to sort of replicate the, the sort of best practices that we've seen with, with other customers. Um, so that's, that's just a quick sort of shout out for the operations work we've been doing. Um, this is a slide that I think gets back to your question about sort of who are the, who are the partners. So um, here's Gigamon. Um, it's actually really hard to keep this slide up to date, but you know, we, we have, you know, for a long time, had an integration with EMC Smarts. Um, Arkin, I already mentioned, NetFlow Logic does this kind of interesting correlation between NetFlow data from the physical and NetFlow data from, from NSX. Um, and Riverbed, you know, also their monitoring uh, software can, can um, get stuff out of uh, the NSX APIs. And then we've also done a bunch of work with our own tools there in the middle. And I'm going to show you a demo in a moment of how we realize operations works with NSX to show you both the physical and the virtual. Um, and then at the top, there's a bunch of things that we've built into the product. Um, so, you know, going back to the kind of early days of network virtualization, we had this belief that if you were going to virtualize a network, you had to do it pretty comprehensively the same way that a virtual machine kind of captures all the properties of a physical machine. Your virtual network should capture all the properties of a real network. And so that means things, you know, like syslog and, and SNMP and port mirroring, like all those kind of traditional things you get from a physical network should be there in a, uh, you know, in a virtual network. And then in addition to that, we've added things that are really hard to do in a physical network, like tracing the life of a packet as it goes from VM to VM. And that's another demo I'll show you in a minute. Um, so, th so that's kind of the, the high level view of how we tackle um, the visibility issue. It's you know, product features to give you visibility into the virtual layer. Um, VMware tools to, to give you visibility into NSX and other parts of the data center, and then integration with third parties who know how to do things like look at the physical network. You know, obviously, we could build physical network measurement capabilities or monitoring capabilities into NSX, but I don't actually think it makes sense for NSX to be in that business. I think there's people who are you know, legitimately tool companies and they should do a good job of that, and you know, VROps is the, kind of the closest we come to our own tooling in that space, and you'll see that in a minute. 
So this is the demo I'm going to show you. By the way, my demos here are not live. I just recorded them um, because it's so much easier to be confident it will work. Um, so um, you're going to see a setup a bit like this with um, a couple of virtual machines connected across a leaf spine backbone and the um, VR ops tool looking at what's going on and, and showing um, all the sort of interactions between virtual and physical. This is the VR ops dashboard. And what you're seeing here is the NSX um, page and over here, we're looking at the physical network um, leaf switches and spine switches. So VROps has gone out and queried the NSX API. Um, it's got a bunch of alerts there because it's a kind of demo configuration with not that much resilience. And then it's showing you the switches down there. What we're going to do now is trace the path between two virtual machines. So we'll click on a couple of virtual machines. And you're going to see the path in logical space and the path in physical space both getting built as it goes out and queries the different components. So at the top here, we've got two VMs connected to a logical switch. And then down here, we've got a set of spine switches connected to leaf switches, connected to hosts, and then virtual machines running on those hosts. So you can see exactly what physical infrastructure is underpinning that virtual network that we created. And if you hover over anything, you see the sort of detailed information. Now we've gone in to the CLI on one of the switches. Um, and we're going to turn off an interface and see what happens. The so first thing you see is there's a, a red uh, switch because it's got a, an alert. So that's an interface down. And so that's now showing up in, in the front page of VR Ops. And now if we look at the picture here, you can see that the, the virtual topology actually hasn't changed because the physical topology had redundancy. But you can also see We've now got a problem in the physical topology because it's now much less resilient than it used to be, which in the long run you'd like to go and fix. So we can see what happened in physical and what happened in virtual, and now you know the fact that they've only one has actually suffered an impairment because of the redundancy. Obviously, a different test would have shown a failure in the in the virtual. We can go back and look at time series to see exactly what happened. So we can see here um, you know, that the interface went down. Uh, we're going to look at that in a bit more detail. Looks like we took it down, brought it up, and took it down again. And uh, so you can kind of get a sense of what was going on. Maybe it was a you know bouncing interface for some reason. And I think at this point, we're just going to go back and repair everything. And so you can see everything looks good on the front page again. And we're just going to sh and show the, um, the virtual and physical paths again. So this is just an example of how you can get visibility into the virtual and the physical from a single pane of glass. And one of the reasons I did this demo was because I'd been kind of telling people you could do this for a long time, but I'd never actually seen it myself. So I thought we should actually sh show that it exists. Um, so as I say, this is done with VR ops. But basically, any tool that can monitor the physical infrastructure could do this, providing it can talk to the NSX APIs. So everything that you saw in that virtual layer was just being populated by queries to the NSX API. So VROps is just saying, you know, give me, the, give me the virtual infrastructure between these two VMs, and that's a set of API requests. Everything on the physical layer is done using a, a plugin of VROps where they go and talk to the different switches using SNMP to figure out what's going on. So it's not exactly rocket science, not, not what I would call a state-of-the-art network management tool, but it just shows you how easy it is to correlate the virtual and the physical because the physical stuff is available, the virtual stuff's available, it just takes somebody to go and query them and, and display them. And that's kind of the business that a lot of the tool vendors are in now. Have you had any, any advanced customers kind of have more <laughs> event-driven event-driven analysis, so when something happens, then go programmatically use the API to look at the, the flow. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not aware of anybody being, being more sort of proactive in the way they, they deal with it. I wouldn't be surprised if that is happening, but I just haven't had that exposure to that myself. Do you have, look. Do you have any uh, future plans for trace flow? I mean, obviously, I think we'll, I'm assuming we're going to get the trace flow, but do you have any future physical networking infrastructure going into trace flow? Because, I mean, that's pretty awesome because you can interject actual real packets into it. So is that a future? Yeah, so, so, so we've, we've talked about whether we could do a, a kind of a physical version of trace flow. Um, and 
I think it's it's actually not that hard to do something in that space. We we um we haven't we haven't done it. Um, in, in part, like you have to depend on what it is that the physical switches will do for you. And so physical switches in general will you know just respond to a sort of typical trace route probe. Mm -hmm. So you know we we did a prototype at one point of a thing called Paris trace route, which is a a variant of trace route that explicitly goes out to try to query all the different ECMP paths across a, a multi-path uh, network. So the technology definitely exists. We haven't productized it. Um, so again, it's partly a matter of like how much do we want to make NSX into its own monitoring tool versus how much do people want to use their own monitoring tools. It's a it's yeah. a it's a tricky it's a tricky question. Um, it's just tough, you know, figuring out, you know, without interjecting real data, cause it's like, you know, is it an edge service gateway firewall? Is it a DFW firewall issue? Yeah. Is it a physical network issue? Yeah. And it's just it's something like Traceflow would be would great for... Yeah, and of course, you know, so I'll show, I'll show Traceflow now since we're talking about it. And, um, you know, for, for, for those of you who haven't seen it before, like what it really does today is it shows you exactly where a problem is. But it, it, if it is in the physical network, it'll localize it down to a particular physical path but not down to a particular physical box. And so you know, that's part of the reason for showing the, these two demos is because the, the next one really shows all the things we can do in the virtual world, whereas the, um, the previous one is kind of a stronger showing of what can be done combining virtual and physical. So let's just jump to this since there's a question about it. So um, this is the um, vSphere web client on the NSX homepage, and we're going to go and, and look at Traceflow. So what Traceflow does is it synthetically injects a packet according to the user's specifications and traces the life of that packet as it goes from vNIC to vNIC. And so we're just going to go in here and select a couple of different VMs and, and then precisely specify what type of packet we want to send between those two VMs. And then that will give us the ability to see are there any problems in getting this packet from that VM to the other VM. So this can debug all kinds of problems. It could tell you that the logical router was not configured right. It could tell you that your firewall rules were too restrictive. It could tell you that the physical network was dropping packets. So any number of things could be diagnosed. And so you know, here we're crafting a very specific packet with you know, source port, destination port, some TCP flags, um, packet size, everything that we want can be configured. And now we, we look at what happens when we inject this packet. So it's exactly as if it came from the VM but it's done without touching the VM. And then what you see is we've got every single stage in the life of the packet, starting from when we injected it at the vNIC to when it arrived at the vNIC at the other side and you know, a couple of you know, firewalls at, at either end, um, a distributed logical router in the middle, a couple of logical switches, and then a physical path in the middle so if at any point the packet got injected into one stage and didn't come out the other side, we would know about it. You could say, oh, the problem was the firewall rule, or the problem was the physical network. Yeah. Is this just all virtual simulated, or is it against what you actually have? So this is a real packet um, that has been injected from the hypervisor, and it's, 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 so it's a, it's a real packet that, that actually flowed across the physical network. Um, it only diagnoses problems in the virtual infrastructure or will identify the fact that a problem existed in the physical infrastructure by, you know, so if there were a problem in the physical, you would see the packet get to this point, you would see it get to that physical hop and not get to the next hop. And so then you would know the problem was in the physical. Um, but as, this was the question asked just a minute ago, could we go even deeper and say, look at the individual hops in the physical? We could totally do that. Um, it's, it just would require a change in the behavior because from the perspective of the physical, that packet looks exactly like a real packet because it is a real packet. The only way in which it's not like a normal packet is it's got one bit in the header that says don't deliver this to the VM but trace it as, as it hits all the different logical pipeline stages. Would you have inside your distributed firewall, uh, if it failed, why? Um, I think it, that actually was shown in that demo that like when, in that case, it succeeded, and it showed you which rule was was um, being hit. So if it failed, you would see which rule was blocking it. So I think this is pretty cool because like it's it, that's the kind of thing where you can't really do that in the physical world, right? To get that level of visibility into how a packet sort of makes its way through the network, like trace route is about as good as it gets. 
but here you're actually seeing sort of pipeline stage by pipeline stage all the way through from, from source to destination, all the things that, that could be going wrong. Um, and so this is, you know, this is why I kind of get a bit upset when people complain that, that um, network virtualization creates visibility problems. Like my, my attitude is no, network virtualization gives you the best visibility you've ever had. It's just that it doesn't solve your physical network visibility problems because you know, the best way to do that is to leverage capabilities of the physical network. And you know, that's kind of not our sweet spot. Yes, we could go after the business that Arkin or EMC Smarts is in, but you know, ultimately, customers are going to choose tools that you know, meet their, their physical network needs. So, I mean, thankfully, we do have good relationships with some of those third-party tool vendors. Is there anything that's inside of the, your UI that is not accessible via the APIs? Because I've heard you've mentioned a few times, you know, APIs and leveraging other <coughs> tools that are meant to do this monitoring, meant to do something else, and you're not in the business of it. So are you leveraging anything that's private API based on your UI that would then limit me from using that in my, so, my UI? So I, certainly our design philosophy is that everything, every feature is accessible by an API. I think historically we had some features that were not accessible by API. Um, they're certainly becoming fewer and fewer, but I don't know, I, I don't want to swear we have none today, but the, the long-term approach is if a feature exists, it's accessible through an API. Perfect. Okay, Scott, do you, do you have anything to add on that? Do you know, I, I feel like if I say absolutely everything's accessible, I'm, I'm almost <laughs> certainly wrong. But... <laughs> no, I, I, think, I, think you're, I think you're right. I think um, there, there may still be some features that are accessible <laughs> we only, but that's being whittled away at. I'm, I'm with you, Bruce. I, I think that they're, Mostly all gone, but there might still be a few. The opposite is is uh, is also true: is that we still had, we had some features that were historically only available via API. They were now going back and adding to the UI um, as well. So there are certain things that you could only do through an API call that we're now putting into the user interface to make it more accessible as well. 